Hey guys, it's Meme and welcome to 2023's Advent Project. I make an Advent every year for as long as I can remember, and we're going to put the playlist of all my previous Advent projects down below. They're all very relevant and able to be used for this year, so if this is not the one for you, check out the playlist because you'll probably find one you like. Now, this is one I wanted to do for years. Now, recently, I reminded you about this star, right? We're going to use this plus 24 more to make our Advent, so let's get started. Now, I'm going to be using our stamp set called Countdown. I love this set. I love these numbers and how this all works, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. The first thing you need to do is you need to print yourself on some cardstock 25 of these. You might want to print 26 to have an extra in case you mess up, and it is a time-consuming process. I'm going to tell you, Shannon sat down. She cut these out. She did it in an afternoon, but she did cut them all out by hand, so that's the way we're going to do this. I just love this project and how it turns out. Okay, so step one is to cut all these guys out, and they're really not hard to cut out. Everything is a straight line, and just sit down in front of the TV. I challenge you, put on a Christmas movie or I don't know, maybe a good podcast or something that you're watching or listening to and just go to town. It gets kind of mindless. You really don't have to pay a whole lot of attention and the cuts don't have to be super, super perfect either because by the time this is three dimensional, you really can't tell. So just cut these out and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, once you get all of them cut out, I need you to do something. I want you to make a couple of marks, okay? You need to poke some holes in this before you assemble it. If you wait till after you assemble it, it can be done, but it's difficult. Ask me how I know, okay? So what I want you to do is you see where this thumb hole will be cut. We're going to cut that in just a second. I want you to move down one point, okay, from there to the left, and you're going to make a pencil mark here, and you're going to make a pencil mark here. And this is where we're going to poke a hole to hang these, okay? So you can go as high or as low as you want. I'll probably kind of split the difference on that. I'm just going to make myself a mark to get in there. And now we're going to take our hole punch and go ahead and poke these holes. Because if you don't, you will have an issue. So now that we've got our marks made, we're going to take our hole punch and we're going to put it in there and punch. Now, you can decide what size hole you want to put here based on what you're going to hang it with. I'm going to be hanging mine with some chunky twine. I think that's so cute for this kind of project. So if you're going to use twine, just do a smaller hole. If you're going to do ribbon, do a larger hole. Go back. Mm -hmm. Now, before you poke those holes, you may want to put some reinforcement here. This is going to be what holds it up on the string for years to come. So you might want to add some maybe some masking tape even, or some painter's tape, or another piece of cardstock glued down, anything you can think of to reinforce this, and do it on the inside, okay? Now, for this little guy, there's a couple options. You can use a um, half-inch punch. Let me show you this. This is a, um, I take that back, this is a three-quarter inch punch. You can use this punch and line it up right here, and it works perfect to do that, or you can just do it with your scissors. Now, this guy is ready to score and fold. Now that you've got them cut and your holes punched, let's do the scoring. And you might remember this from my original video when I showed you this. I just put them into my, onto my scoreboard like this and just run around and score all these lines. Now, I'm using that middle drawn score line. You know, your, your scoreboard doesn't come with that. That's something I do every time I get a new scoreboard is I make that line with a Sharpie so I can always kind of float in the middle. Now, Shannon, when she did these, she used her Dress My Craft trimmer that has the score blade attachment. And you can do that as well if you want to do it. That's how she just ran it through there back and forth and got them all scored. I'll show you a trick. If you're not sure if you got all the lines, flip it over. And if you don't see a star, see how I don't? I don't have all the lines done. So that's how you can see if you've missed any. Now you can see my two stars have started to appear on the back. I also want to score all of these little dotted lines. It makes it easier when you fold. So go ahead and line them up and do those as well. Don't run all the way down because you don't want to score inside of here. Just float this. And the best way to do it is just to kind of line it up with the points at the top and bottom. I'll show you here. Like if you come over here, I've lined it up here and I can see here that that point lines up. And then score that. It will help you later. All right, flip it over, check the back and make sure all your score lines are done. And we're ready to start folding and creasing. All right, so when you're folding and creasing, Shannon has a tip for us. She said when she was doing this, she folded every line before she assembled and she folded them forward and backwards. But the reason she did is because we're using the Grocer's Craft from PA, which is a thick, thick cardstock. And she said it really helped in the end product um, when she was going to pop them into star shapes if she had worked them forward and backwards. So I will do that as well. 
Now, I can't do um, these little guys just yet. We're going to do those whenever we assemble. They'll pop in pretty easy. So that's that star. Now let's do the other one. Let's do our center. Don't be nervous about this project. These are actually very forgiving. You'd be surprised. You, you might think, oh, I'm never going to get this right because every little line's got to per be perfect. It really does just pop into place. Also, as Shannon reminded me this morning, we don't do perfect. So <laughs> we were doing something and we lost something or missed. I don't remember. But I was like, oh, no. And she's like, oh, we don't do perfect. I said, good reminder. Good reminder. I said that. Yeah, Shannon said it. Y'all should be proud of her. <laughs> if Shannon's learning we don't do perfect, surely you are, right? <laughs> All right, so now that you have folded and creased and folded and creased, it's time to close it up. What I'm going to do is fold down my tabs. Not this one. Leave this one open because it doesn't get glue. The one with the little thumb piece there. We'll fold these down. And you can use whatever method of glue you want. I'm going to use wet glue. I'm going to use my art glitter glue. But you could use sticky tape. Um, or whatever works for you. So put glue on all your tabs. And then all you have to do is flip this guy over and lay him down. And he will catch all of those tabs. You can kind of wiggle him into place. You got a little bit of wiggle room with your score marks. And also, if you see you need to adjust this one on the bottom, you can do that. It's just paper. You can always just adjust any of them. So that is the beginning. Now see how we already have our holes? See how hard that would be to get to? You need to trust us on that one. That's hard if you don't do it ahead of time. All right, so let's pop it into place. So what we'll do here is every one of these little lines, we're just going to lift this up, and every one of these little lines are going to get popped out. So you're going to push in between your little star legs. Put your fingers up in there. It helps. There we go. Just kind of train it. And the cool thing about this advent calendar is we're going to be able to fold it flat and store it year after year. That's what I'm so excited about this. I'm going to show you that because we actually have it where I can show you all of them assembled where we can lay them flat. So I'm just getting this guy folded and creased, but actually this little thumb piece goes to the inside. So I'll push that in there, push that down like that. And when you see all the others, you'll see how cute these all turn out. Isn't that cute? I love the craft color. All right, let's do our little decoration for the front. we got to have something that says the numbers. Let's do it. So this is a great place to use up scraps, okay, because you're going to need 25 of these. And here's how I'm starting. From our stamp set countdown, I'm using this little circle and all of these numbers. I love this font. I think it is so cute, and it really turns out precious here. So I'm going to ink up my circle and stamp it. Now, Okay, so the trick here is we're going to be using a one and a half inch circle punch. When you stamp this, make sure you give yourself room. I'm a little tight here. This is the one I did first on camera, and I feel like that's a little tight, so I moved it down a little bit here. So what you'll do is you'll center your image in the punch like so, and then punch that out. And that gets you your number one. Then we're going to keep using punches. You know, I love them. Let me put this ink up before I get everything inky. So for our next punch, what I'm going to do, since that was a one and a half inch, I'm going to do a green one and three quarter inch. And that's going to be a layer. Then, you know, there's got to be a little glitter. It is Christmas. We're going to use this red, beautiful glitter paper. And I'm going to punch a two inch scallop punch for it. Now, if you don't have all these punches and things that I'm using, you can use your electronic cutting machine. You can use dies. You can use anything you want to make that happen. Look how gorgeous. Love it. Now, we've already made 24 of these, and we did those um, off camera, but I'm going to show you what they look like in just a second. But when we did it, here's what we did. We punched all 25 of these, and we laid them out in a series here, and then we added glue like this, and we took the green, and we laid it on top of there. Okay, and you just center it over the little scallops, and we just did this assembly line style. It makes it easy, all right? Then I want to pop this number up. I think it'll be cute on there. So just using a little bit of foam tape, and with all your um, little pieces laid out, go ahead and foam tape them all, peel off the backers, and then you come back and apply your numbers. That's how we did it to make it go quicker. Look how cute that is. Isn't it kind of vintage looking? That's what I really loved about it. All right, then let me show you where this goes. So when you do this, here's what you need to make sure of. I flatten my star out. I want to flip this over and I see my holes at the top. I want to make sure that is the top point of my star. Okay, so flip this over. This piece here, I want on the back 
because when I tuck this in, I want it to go in and have my smooth side go around the front. You'll see that in a second. Just make sure the one with the holes is behind you here. And when you glue this down, you glue it down like this. Okay. So I'm going to add some glue just like this. And then I'm going to stick this down. And I'm just gluing that on the middle. Isn't that cute? I think that's adorable. Let me show you the others. So this is all the others in this little container. And what this shows you is you can store these every year because you can store them flat. See how nice that is? This is all of them with their decoration on the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble them. Now, I would probably stuff them, shape them, and then thread them. That's what I would probably do. Um, you can do that whatever way works best for you. But right now, I'm going to go through and open all of these, and we're going to run our thread through. Just for camera, so I can get these on camera and you can see them. There's five here assembled. Let me show you what I would do. I would leave my string on the spool while I thread these, okay? And I would probably, in a perfect world, start with 25, okay? So I'm working my way back. You could do two rows of string if you wanted to. The other thing I would do is I would use this chunky twine. I think this is fantastic. And at the end of the year, you unthread them, you put the twine with them, and then this won't tangle. It's really good about not knotting up. So about not knotting up, you know. So again, perfect world, start from the back, but we're going to do it like this. So we're going to just run, we're going to use our bead threader because it is pivotal here. And you can put it in there just like that and then run your little twine through. Look how cute this is. Oh my goodness, I just love this guy. This might be one of my, every year I say it's my favorite advent, don't I? I won't even say it this year. So if you don't have a bead threader or you think you might not have it every year when you need it, you might lose it like me, I probably would. You could always put one of those dental threaders in your storage container with this so you'd have that every year. All right, then we're just going to spread them out from each other and hang them where we want them, whatever way we want to hang them. Look how cute that is. I think that's adorable. I might even, once I get it hung, have you ever seen how they like tie a ribbon and let it kind of hang here and there and stuff? I might do that. I don't know. But you can play and do anything you want. But this is adorable. The stars are free printable. I'm not sure I said that. We'll make sure we link that below. Um, just love how this turns out. I will put pictures in at the end to show you what the whole thing looks like. And that is it. Advent for 2023. I love it. Honestly, one of my faves. Um, do me a favor. Be sure to subscribe. We still have lots of things coming. We got some gift ideas for you guys. I know you love gift ideas. That's coming soon. Also, don't miss during this season, we're doing an extra live show. So you can catch us on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, love to see you there as well as our regular Thursday live show. All right, guys. Um, until next time. Bye now. Bye.